Flordelis came from the poorest and most dangerous neighborhoods in Brazil, but she transformed into one of the country's most influential women. She became a singer, a wealthy pastor overseeing six large churches, and a politician. Before all of this, she was known for adopting almost 51 children, many of whom were homeless or orphans, earning her the title the mother of the nation. She adopted her future husband, Anderson du Carmo, when he was 14 and married him seven years later. They enjoyed a happy life together. Unfortunately, the tragic ending of their relationship was unimaginable to everyone. What exactly happened? Watch the full video to find out. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified as I upload a new video. Let's go on. Flordelis was born on February 5, 1961, in Brazil. Her father was an artist and musician, and her mother ran a daycare, taking care of children from the community in their home. However, this was no ordinary middle-class upbringing. The family lived in one of the largest favelas in Rio de Janeiro. If you've ever seen a movie set in Rio and admire the bright colors of the buildings perched on the steep hillsides, those are the favelas. From a distance, they may seem like charming homes, but up close, you can see the buildings are a bit unstable, lacking maintenance, and constructed illegally over the years. These slums are where the poorest of the poor live, often surviving on just a few dollars a day. When Flordelis was a young child, her father, Francisco do Santos, introduced her to the Assemblies of God, a powerful church organization worldwide. Her family took their faith seriously, and her father started prayer groups in their home. Flordelis, who loved to sing, happily joined in. With her exceptional singing talent, she was frequently invited to lead worship at the front of the church. As a teenager, she followed her father's example and began hosting her own prayer groups. At the age of 14, Flordelis faced a severe test of her faith when her father and brother died in a car accident. Left alone with her mother, Flordelis had to take on the role of provider for her family. She found a job at a bakery and sang at her mother's church in her free time. In her early 20s, she married a man, though not much is known about him, and together they had three children. However, by the time Flordelis turned 30, her husband was no longer in the picture, and she raised the children on her own. During the day, she ran the daycare with her mom, looking after the children, and on weekends, she continued to minister to her congregation. During that time, the crime rate in her hometown was extremely high, leading to many children being left homeless on the streets due to widespread violence. In response, Flordelis began inviting these children into her home and adopting them. The kids she welcomed weren't only those who were abandoned or homeless. In fact, she allowed any child who wanted to come to her house to stay. She had no rules, no boundaries, and the adoptions weren't anything close to formal. She acted as a savior, rescuing children from their troubled environments, offering stability, and providing opportunities they wouldn't have had otherwise. Among the children Flordelis adopted was her future husband, Anderson du Carmo, who was 14 years old at that time, while she was 30 years old. Anderson began dating Flordelis' daughter, Simone du Santos Rodriguez, even though they were technically considered siblings since Flordelis had taken Anderson in as her son. However, the relationship did not last long. Soon afterward, Anderson became Flordelis' favorite, and all the other children realized that he received special attention right from the beginning. Over the following years, Flordelis and Anderson grew closer. Regardless of when their romantic relationship started, by the time Anderson turned 21, they were married. At that point, Flordelis had five adopted children and her three biological children living with her and her husband permanently. A year later, she adopted 37 children, 14 of whom were just babies. These children were all victims of a recent attack where corrupt officers killed their parents and caregivers, leaving them with no way to survive. News then spread about her being a mother to 45 children in total, which authorities didn't take lightly. So she was called to court because none of her adoptions were done legally. However, after holding a press conference where she explained her mission to save kids from the streets and death, she became a hero. 
This helped her gain international recognition. By now, Floridalis had adopted a few more children, making her a mother to 55 kids. The praise and support for her continued, and two businessmen provided a fully furnished home on the western side of Rio, where she could live with all the children. The home even had a large garage that Floridalis and Anderson decided to turn into a new church. The earnings from their endeavors allowed them to purchase their own large church, where they led a congregation of over 4,500 followers. Floridalis singing played a significant role in touching the hearts and wallets of her followers. In 1998, she released her first studio album titled Floridalis, but it didn't perform very well. However, her life took a turn when she appeared on the Planet Shusha show, one of Brazil's most popular TV talk shows. Floridalis attended the taping with many of her children, and from that moment, she was referred to as the mother of the nation. After the show, numerous television programs, politicians, and wealthy supporters approached her. They all wanted to be seen alongside the mother of the nation. One of Floridalis's biggest fans was a well-known filmmaker. After visiting the favelas with Floridalis, he decided to create a biographical film about her and the positive impact she had on the favelas and her many adopted children. In October 2009, the film premiered at Rio's International Film Festival, and Floridalis's family received a red carpet reception. However, similar to her album, the film didn't do well commercially. Still, it led Floridalis to secure a record deal with one of Brazil's top gospel labels, M Key Music. Over the next decade, she released five albums filled with songs of redemption and praise. These albums were much more successful than her initial release, and her songs continue to be sung in many of Brazil's Pentecostal churches today, attracting a significant audience. In 2016, Florida Liss and Anderson performed for tens of thousands of fans on Copacabana Beach at a gospel event. This success also brought financial prosperity, with them earning $20,000 per month through various income streams, surpassing the average Brazilian wage of just $500 a month. The once girl from the favelas was now sporting channel handbags, flying business class, and living in a gated community. Floridalis and her husband became increasingly influential, and in 2019, she achieved a remarkable milestone by becoming a member of the Chamber of Deputies, representing Rio de Janeiro. She received the highest number of votes of any woman in history at that time. She was seemingly living the dream. At 58 years old, Floridalis and her 42-year-old husband were considered an attractive couple, long adored for their seemingly perfect marriage with many children, notable success, and abundant wealth. However, behind closed doors, things were not as harmonious as they appeared. Anderson, Floridalis' husband, had been her manager, co-pastor, and co-parent for years. He had achieved success in his own right, revered as a powerful pastor capable of converting people after just one sermon. However, some people believed that with his success came a growing ego. Anderson enjoyed the limelight as much as Floridalis, if not more. After her political appointment, he began attending all her meetings and often spoke on her behalf, even when it concerned the work she had been elected to do. Anderson also controlled the operations of their church, how the children were raised, and, to Floridalis dismay, the family's finances. Floridalis became increasingly dissatisfied with having to seek permission to spend the money she earned, especially when it came to indulging in certain luxuries for herself. Anderson seemed to have a problem with it. However, separation or divorce was not an option. Floridalis, being a devoutly religious woman, viewed divorce unfavorably in the Pentecostal community. She wasn't willing to let a scandal ruin her hard-earned reputation. She decided that she alone was responsible for her situation and resolved to be the one to change it. On June 15, 2019, Anderson was discovered dead in his car next to his home, having been shot almost 30 times. By the next morning, Anderson's tragic death made headline news. Initially, it was thought to be a robbery gone wrong. But after further investigations, it emerged that the murder was orchestrated by two of their stepchildren. 
with Floridalis implicated as the mastermind of the plot. 18-year-old Lucas Dos Santos do Carmo pleaded guilty to the murder and also accused one of his adoptive brothers, 38-year-old Flavio Dos Santos, of being involved. When questioned by the police, Floridalis denied any role in the attack. She told officers that she loved her husband and had no reason to want him gone. She suspected her children might have wanted Anderson dead after coming across some of their text messages. However, the children's accounts of the events remained consistent. They recalled numerous instances of Florida Liz saying, Anderson is going to die because he is in God's way. She told them, if you want to kill him, it will have to be with bullets. Another motive surfaced. Florida Liz had a new love interest, another one of her adopted children named Luciano. He became her new favorite and was in a prime position to replace Anderson. Within six days of Anderson's death, six more children were arrested. However, arresting Floridalis proved more challenging due to her elected position, providing her with parliamentary immunity. She consistently posted on Instagram, expressing her apparent depression without Anderson, sharing old photos of them together and declaring her enduring love for him. However, things took a turn for the worse for Floridalis. In 2021, Parliament voted to remove her from her elected position, stripping her of the political immunity that had shielded her. She was immediately charged with aggravated murder and taken into custody. In November 2022, she stood trial and was found guilty of orchestrating her husband's murder. She was sentenced to 50 years and 28 days in prison. Flavio, who pulled the trigger, received a 33-year sentence, and Lucas, who bought the weapon, was sentenced to seven years. Other children involved also received sentences. Floridalis believed herself to be invincible, but her pride would be her downfall. What are your thoughts on this shocking ending? Share your opinion in the comments. And that's it. If you enjoyed the video and want more like it, be sure to leave a thumbs up below in appreciation. And if you haven't already, you really want to subscribe, subscribe to my channel and tick the bell icon so you get notified as I upload a new video every week. See you in the next video.